We were just talking earlier on, Jacqueline, saying, God, how times have changed since you started out, haven't they? I mean, you've got sex toys on the supermarket shelves now. It's incredible, <laughs> isn't it? Oh, it really has changed. I mean, gosh, when I think back to... Oh, it's 38 years ago now when I started it. And there, you couldn't buy sexy underwear in the high street like you can today. You just wouldn't... Mm. You could, that's unconceivable Taboo. today. It is. Yeah, yeah. it really it Turned has our lives around, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> women, women just would not go into those shops, would they? They just no. were so... No, of unfit. course. And the stuff in and the clothes... That, well, clothing, pants... <laughs> scratchy. They were, they were scratchy, they were made by men, they were bought by men. And that's really where the whole idea came from, because, um, you know, women wanted to be able to sort of spice up their sex yeah. lives and wear sexy underwear, but they wanted to be in control, they wanted to and, be empowered. And when you came up with the idea for the Anne Summers party, is it right that one of, one of your board members said, well, this won't work, women don't like sex? Just, that is absolutely <laughs> true. I, I remember walking down this long corridor into the boardroom of sort of eight sort of men, middle-aged men, grey-suited, and I was only 21 at the time and had sort of talking about my idea. And he Hello, literally... I don't know how you had the guts to do that. <laughs> I, said, I don't know either. <laughs> but he literally threw his pen down on the table and said, well, this isn't going to work, is it? <laughs> but... Clearly, it said a lot more about his sex life yeah, than it yeah, did about my yeah, idea. Yeah. Exactly. So you've got an, an eight-year-old daughter now? You're nine-year-old. She's nine, she's nine. So uh, what do you talk to her about? With, well, I mean, she's a bit young. Well, I don't know, is she too young to be talking about sex? Do you tell her what Mummy does? Do you go through the Christmas catalogue? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> um, if you were sweet, she would. Mummy, mummy makes sweet, you probably. Probably. very confident. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, she's very <laughs> proud of Mummy and, um, you know, I do a lot to inspire her as much as I possibly can. I mean, I, I took Scarlett to one of my speaking... I do public speaking and I took her to one of my speeches when she was five years old because I wanted her to see Mummy up on stage and think, you know, this is normal, this is yeah. not just something men do. But, you know, she sees underwear on my screensaver, but that's about as far as it goes. And did she say, crikey, that looks uncomfortable? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think, <laughs> now that supermarkets have followed you and uh, have got sex toys on the shelves, do you think that will impact your business or do you think that, that most uh, people would prefer to buy that stuff online or through your shops or parties well, or whatever? Yeah, that's an interesting question. And, of course, brands are going to try different, different things. And, I, actually, I think it's a sign of the times that, you know, sex is so much more... You know, it's not taboo, it's not pushed under the carpet, like you said. I didn't um, even know they were in the supermarket. What aisle is it in? What aisle? What aisle? <laughs> what aisle? Well, well, luckily not next to non-stick There's pan. my oh, yeah. <laughs> There's my... Apparently it's in health and well-being. Oh, I, I, I have been... Well, I've been informed. I don't know. I haven't been there. No, no, honestly, I haven't. I haven't. Everyone have have looks in each other's trolleys to see what you've, you've got. I do. Yes. Food you've got. And they'd be going, oh, no. I would buy a sex toy in a supermarket. No, you wouldn't oh, like God, it, yeah. God forbid if the barcode didn't work. Excuse me! Oh, God. Assistance is coming. <laughs> oh, my goodness, we're terrible. Um, Jacqueline, you mentioned Scarlett there, who's, who's nine now, and you've spoken recently about, you know, the very traumatic circumstances uh, around, well, Scarlett's birth, and, and actually she, she was a twin. Um, and your son, Alfie, um, who passed away age eight months. Um, you know, obviously we see this very successful woman and we joke about sex toys and things because they're all very giggly, but that period of your life must have been... So difficult. I mean, you know, anybody who's lost a child, it's the worst thing any parent can ever go through. Um, it's not a story I've really talked a lot about, but, um, you know, and having twins, and obviously Scarlett, who is a healthy, confident, you know, lively um, nine-year-old, birthdays and Christmas is obviously bittersweet, but, you know, we really try to keep Alfie's memory alive, but it was... a uh, you know, we talk about him all the time, pictures everywhere, and, and Scarlett is very, very aware and asks about him a lot. But it was a very, very difficult time. And um, You found out during the pregnancy, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I very... was... Uh, during... Yes. At my 12-week scan, I found out that he had a fatal abnormality, um, which actually turned out to be a condition called ALAB or uh, Holland Press Encephaly, which is a, a, a brain condition. Um, and I was told that he, he wouldn't... Um, he would pass naturally during, during the, uh, during the pregnancy. pregnancy. And, of course, normally, 
a, a, a child with that disability would pass. But of course, I had twins, and that's um, so the goal goalposts kept moving. I mean, I was devastated. I mean, well, just to take you back a bit, it was fantastic to hear that I was pregnant with twins. Because it was IVF, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, and of course, your fourth time. And you, that's right. And that's a struggle Penny, and you in find itself. that out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm. Absolute roller coaster, and you mm. find out the news quite early on. Mm. But then at 12 weeks to find out that, um, you know, he, he wasn't going to survive the birth uh, or the pregnancy, uh, and then the goalposts kept moving, and then it wasn't going to survive the birth. And then, of course, he was born. Um, and that was uh, immensely traumatic because, because of his condition. He was born in pain. And you've got one healthy ten, yeah. twin, too. Yeah. No, you know, no well, parents should have to hard, go through that. Uh, impossible to imagine. Absolutely yeah. heart, heartbreaking story. Yeah. And what, how strong you were to survive that, and, and not only yourself, but as a, a partnership, you and your husband going through the, the trauma of the IVF failures, and then being successful, and then having that devastating news. So I, you know, praise it goes out Thank to you, you and, your, you. and your family. Thank Fantastic. You, yeah. Has it made you the way that you treat Scarlett any different? Has it made you more protective? Of um, her? I think as as a baby, yes. But you know, I, my own childhood was quite challenging, and my mother was overprotective. So yeah. I've almost forced myself to not be like that. I want her to have every experience she possibly can. Mm. I mean, she's very fortunately, unlike myself, who was very shy as a child. She's yeah. incredibly outgoing. Um, and I just want her to grow up believing she can be whatever, you know, whatever she wants to be. So I think, you know, the more I can be brave and, uh, <laughs> and, and, and let her do things, the better. I find it extraordinary that you should say that you weren't brave because you, to yeah, go back to your I. original story yeah. of going into the boardroom age yeah. 21 and telling a load of blokes about you were yeah. going to be selling sex Well, that toys. was a different type of brave. No, I was... Uh, <laughs> yeah, I've, I am quite a contradiction. I know that, you know, it's the... I've, and the traits I would want her to have is courage and resilience yeah. and confidence. But, um, you know, I think how certainly when you're a mother, you're, you're, I think you, you approach things differently. Yeah. yeah. Jacqueline, she's a very lucky girl to have you as her mum. Listen, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Jacqueline Gold, everyone.